Alright, hey everyone. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video today. Um, we're going to be doing a reacting video. It's my first time ever doing one of these. I am kind of excited and kind of terrified to be reacting. This is going to be my very first YouTube video. If you have been doing YouTube videos, you know, or really anything, handmade, sewing stuff, or YouTube videos, or whatever, you grow a lot in the process. And sometimes you're like, really? Did I release that on the internet for the whole world to see? So. We're going to be doing my first video uploaded to this channel. Um, well, technically the first one was like the little channel trailer way back when, but we're going to be doing the Smock Bishop tutorial um, and yeah, reacting to it. So it should be fun. Let's get going. this whole Slovana farm, especially if you're kind of newer to my channel. If you've been following me for a long time, then you might have known back, you might have been following me back in my Savannah days, but my husband and I used to live in Savannah, Georgia, just on the outskirts actually, and we had a separate channel, that's what we started on way back when, and uh, it's still up and running, it's a hot mess of a channel, it has a hodgepodge of topics, and we upload when we upload, which is no consistent schedule, but um, anyway, so we started that channel as Slovana Farms, and then I started doing a a little bit of sewing channel sewing videos on that channel but we really had acquired an audience of like woodworkers and outdoorsy stuff and building things and whatever and so the sewing didn't really fit on that channel so we branched it off but we still used the whole Slovana Farms branding so that was this whole little Hey everyone, I am Anna super duper excited about this tutorial. This is the Smock Bishop tutorial. Yeah. I've and had the cute little music for in the a very right? long time like, now and I'm excited so to get this video done and out. And this looks like any that. other of my sewing videos. This is just the way I've been putting them together. There's multiple, multiple ways to put together Smock Bishops as there is many other things in sewing and it's just sewing, the way that so I have been do doing them together. I have put them together just about every single way that is possible to put these things together. Okay. And like I said, this That's is just not true. I put them together a lot of different ways. But my, um, my, uh, I do it completely different these days, and I much prefer it. I do a method where I take the needles on, or sorry, the, the thread on and off the pleating needles, and I actually pleat it before I do the shoulder seams, and I love the method. If you're curious on how that works, I will have a video linked down below that explains that. This is my, my current favorite way. If you ask me in about a year from now, I yes. might have a different I process. I don't know, but I've been putting these together this way for about six months now, and it's my favorite so far. So let's get into this. And this Monk Bishop tutorial is the one with the pleated arms. It's not the one with oh the angel The sleeves. camera works. First, work. you're going to want to iron your fabric and then lay out your pattern oh, pieces. Now, mess. it's really important when you lay out your pattern pieces that the top of the neckline is the same spot in the fabric. So, for example, I'm using dotted Swiss for this tutorial, and I'm going to want the dot to be yeah, in the same the location by the neckline. Here. That way, when I sew down <laughs> the side seams, the dot Do will be in line. So, if you're I dealing know, with anything of so stripes or patterns <laughs> or whatever, you're going to want to be mindful of where you put your pattern pieces because you're going to want the neckline and a dress. I was wearing a dress, Daisy. Do you see that dress? So all be in the same and place pearls. That pattern. I hope that a dress sense. and pearls. And if your fabric will rip, you are really going to want to rip your fabric because you're going to want your fabric to be on grain for Smock Bishop. It'll help your fabric go through the pleater better. The only exception with that is that if you have this a was printed before fabric babies, obviously. that hasn't been printed true to the grain, this was one of the maybe very, you're going to want to kind the, of make the, it look this was one better of the according few to few videos that so I did before the grain, having children. Go off so and the rest of the videos on the, the channel have been after Audrey that was that born. <laughs> because otherwise, yeah. you're going to clean it. What will happen is Can we see how cute the... The, the um will be out of the room is and look at all the clothes in that closet. People will some people will ask me about um some people will make comments about like I can't start sewing because I don't have babies to sew for or I can't wait to have grandchildren to sew for or you know, I miss sewing for little ones, whatever. You don't have to stop sewing if it brings you joy. You just sew. Put it in the closet and and uh you'll figure out what to do with them. So if it brings you joy, you do it. You don't need to have, please stop eating my hair. You don't need to have a little one to sew for it by any means. I had several closets full before um, Audrey came along. Stop eating my hair. 
and it to each other and it won't look very good at all. And something else to be mindful of when you're cutting out your pattern pieces, I can't the armhole area, work. you want to cut as, you're also going to need to cut a strip for the placket and I'll just tear a two inch strip that I know is going to be longer than I need so I don't have to think about measuring it, I just rip her out and that's that. I still do that placket method today. It is super easy and I love it being extra long so you don't have to, you know, you're not like a quarter inch short or something. Oh, she's at that phase where she's like pulling on hair. It's, um, that's a lot of fun. Daisy. That, and in addition to that, you're also going to want to cut a strip on the bias. Refer to your pattern to see how long to make that strip. So since the sleeves are smart for this bishop, you're going to want to pleat the sleeves oh God, before foot? sewing them. And because I'm using dotted Swiss, I'm pulling out the little dots from the section of fabric that's going to go through the pleater. Technically, you don't have to do this. You do risk breaking a needle depending on how nice your dotted Swiss You do not have to do this. Um, it is cleaner if you do this. I still, I still, um, if I want a clean look, will do this. Now, since this video, I went to a class um, with Cindy Foose, and she had some of her, like, um, some of her garments there just kind of showing off and providing inf inspiration, that sort of thing. And one of her garments was a dotted Swiss, and she had pleated the fabric up, um, via the dots. So especially if you don't have a pleater, you can buy some dotted Swiss and similar to gingham, pleat using the dots. Oh my gosh, I look so put together. The dress, the pearls, the pearl earrings, the watch. Then you want to take it over to your iron and very carefully iron this over and then together. You don't want to pull too hard at this point since you only have a 30 second or so. This has blue dotted Swiss fabric I got from Mood um, in New York City when I was up there visiting my brother who at the time was going to Columbia University and it, it was a sweet little bishop that Audrey wore quite a, quite a bit. I need to get it out so you can wear it. Yeah, I got some sweet little photos of her in a swing wearing it and they're some of my favorite. They're, she has this like sweet little look on her face and I just, I love those photos. So a fabric on the other side of that seam. So now I take it back to my machine and, and I sew just on the outside of those raw edges to enclose this French seam. And that makes the French seam like a sixteenth of an inch. You can see it's about a halfway between the eighth mark, so it's about a sixteenth of an inch. Very, very, very tiny. And these things go through my pleater like butter. I never <laughs> like have to butter. worry about a needle breaking. <laughs> I haven't had a needle break. Now you're ready to clean Oh my it. goodness, all the cats. If you're using that as well, that was a quilt I made for Charlie way back when we were dating. The air that's going to be <laughs> But if you aren't using dotted oh, switch, you can skip this part and go straight to the pleating. So when I was ready to pleat my fabric, I fold it in two and then iron the top of it. This meant that I was ironing... That iron. Oh, that iron. Goodness. ...the crease into the very middle of the bishop. Then I Another used dress? Look at that. scotch tape to Your mother was align so styling the back fabric the onto that dowel. You want to try to align that fabric yes. as evenly as possible. I know, and then what and happened? And then you start rolling the then dowel. Then what happened, It's huh? not critical that your fabric stays taut, but it is somewhat important that your fabric stays in line. I mean, you can alter oh, your look at fabric that a little bit tape. as it goes to the pleater. I forgot all about that. So, I guess I have been doing this for... So I don't do that anymore. I um, just roll her up. I don't know if I've, I guess I've gotten just more comfortable with it. I forgot all about doing that way back when. That's a good trick though if you, uh, if you need that. You use it. I used to use it. <laughs> so if you're say an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch off from being in line on the dowel, it's not a huge deal because you can kind of alter that as it goes through the pleater. But you want to try to stay as close as you can without stressing too much. So you just keep rolling her up, and you can see when I get to a sleeve, I'll sort of align the bottom of that sleeve on the dial like so, and then I'll just continue rolling. The number of needles you're going to have in your pleater is going to vary on the size bishop you're making and your personal preference on how many rows you want to smock. But once you have the desired number of needles in there and they're all threaded, now you can start to pleat your fabric. I like to align my fabric up with the notch just to the right of the furthest needle to the right. Still true. Oh, look at that sense. arrow. And using that notch That's me lovely. That's quality right there. You see, that? you're not paying no attention, huh? Now, this is the bishop board that I have. I still and have that find board. So love I will it. leave a link in the description box to where you can purchase one from them. But I will take those threads and I will knot them together. So there is so much in this background 
there are garments that, these are all garments that I've made. I've made all these garments too, except for this one. This white one that you, it's kind of in the, you know, behind my arm here. Um, that was a garment that my late aunt made actually for me when I was of that age, <laughs> way back when. And then um, that propped up is the big old Martha Pollan, um, what is it called? The Hope Chest book that she has. And those are some roses that I dried, the antique roses out in the garden. This was a little thing that I did with my aunt when I was like in middle school or something. We went and we painted clay. It was, it was fun and you know, I still have it. Well, obviously it's right there. So a couple, you know, I like to surround myself with like inspiring things in my sewing space as much as possible. Gather in groups of twos or threes. Once that's done, I'll pull out the pleating threads from the other side. Again, the amount of pleating threads to pull out is designated by your pattern piece. So pull these out, and then I kind of trim them up if they're just uber duper long. So it's not my hair! Them. And then you're going to work on it's pulling these. Yours. So you're going to kind of hold the neckline in place, and they will leave it on this blocking board until it has dried, like maybe oh, overnight or so. Oh, the I've done this a handful Look of times, this. and honestly, I okay, haven't so gotten too much of a difference. This was... Um, Generally, I will this was a thing before I discovered the freezer line. paper method, and, then, yeah, and the freezer paper method, yeah, this is probably one it has better results, and it's less time. time, so it's just a it win all around, I love that method, that um, sure. oh yeah, there was my first my hot perfect. mess of a bishop. I'm pretty happy with how they turn out, and this is how I do them. I do them <laughs> by back smocking that first holding row. I know that back smoking takes a little bit more time, but I found that I don't like the results that are given by faster methods, so I just take the time to back smock that first holding row, and that works well for me. And you have to remember the neckline is a pretty yeah. dominant feature on these smock dishes. I'm sorry. What would you like to do instead, huh? Would you like to pull right, my hair? Do you see your mother? She's sewing without anybody pulling on her hair or strapped to her or any of that. So again, for a French thing, it is wrong side together. All in one sitting? Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Enter space where you can put your hand down buttonhole later on or whatever method you decide to close Did I just the say hand down buttonhole? As you continue down that pocket, you're going to have to... I didn't think I was doing hand down buttonhole with that one. But I guess I was. I still really prefer a hand on buttonhole. I think they are wonderful. <laughs> and uh, much easier than what people might think. I have uh, coming up I do have a whole series on button, hand on buttonholes that I'll be doing. Breaking everything down. Is that okay I with you? To dress off to the side. That way you won't have bunches of fabric <laughs> caught in those stitches looking like a hot mess Jesus. in your placket. Hi. Also, you're going to want to Hi. Like well, I said, that I, I do this step with freezer paper instead of back smoking. So, so much easier down, and it's better results. So it's just a win all around. Pages. And that'll make some more sense later when I show you how I do that. So but I, I still do the two inch wide um, stitches by a span. Back smoking. All that. All the daisies we were about to see an ad for a Hulu documentary. I don't know if y'all know this, but um, on YouTube, the advertisers are allowed to pick like what sort of videos they want to advertise on, but I have absolutely no say on what ads go on my videos. It's just whether I want to monetize or not, but I don't have a choice otherwise. Just an FYI. <laughs> You see your mother sitting there with that any one pulling on her. Oh, that dress in the corner. Okay, so this dress in the corner, that was a dress I wore to one of the songs. They had like Christmas parties. Um, well, uh, and they would like host it at somebody's house and it would be a fun little thing and so this was a dress I think it was a Vogue dress but I don't really remember um, it has a drop waist to it and then un at the skirt I pleated it up and I did smocking with that metallic thread and the metallic thread is a bit of a pain to use the key to it is that you have to pull it in the right direction every single time as soon as you start like getting off that angle, it turns into a hot mess in a hurry. But it's got um, 
I want to say this is like black broadcloth or something. I have the dress somewhere. I'm, um, and then this is like a velvet red uh, trim here and there. And I'm, I don't know if I did a bow or not, but I've got the gold uh, smocking down there. I forgot all about that. Not all of it. I forgot all about that, Daisy. And at this point, oh goodness, project, she's that's going back to with our dually. So this, um. <laughs> my face with a needle and my so this was uh our this was Charlie's dually. This is a 95 a Ford uh, uh F350 uh, 95 what am I trying to say? An F350 yeah. was the model. 1995 was the year. <laughs> um and you can see we're pulling something. That's like the the gooseneck trailer up there. Who knows what we were doing? We did all sorts of all sorts of stuff back then. Embroidery? Yes. And I bring smocking with me. I'm going to do the smocking with. Then I'll take these when we're going driving gracious. on long distances. I think I have done every single one of them from hand oh, crochet. Oh, yeah, little those loops are a pain. To I have learned from having kiddos those hand crochet loops. Hold on. Hold that thought. Okay, so since having little ones, I have found these little hand cro crocheted little loop things. I still have a video on my channel that shows how to do them if you're interested. But logistically, they are a pain to put on uh, like a fresh newborn, a wiggly baby, any of them. It's just, they're a pain. Hand snaps is where it's at. To machine machine buttonholes button suck too. To those, those suck as well. Straps and drillings for wedding gowns. I think you name it, I have tried it. Currently, my favorite method is to do a hand done buttonhole. I would say my next favorite method is to do a hand crocheted loop. I think this is sort of you find what works for you and what you like the look of best, and you go with that. So my current favorites are um, the for a bishop would be snaps. If you want the look of a button, just put a false button on the background or on like on the front side, whatever. Uh, if you're doing okay, we're almost done. If you're doing um, if you're doing a bishop for an older child, then a hand on buttonhole would be would be where it's at. Many different ways to do this back. But like I said, my favorite way to do them now is the hand on buttonholes, and I have a video on how to do hand on buttonholes. They are not as hard as what people make them out to be like. I promise you, I taught myself. Bishop. Like I said, there's many oh, different ways vanilla to do a raspberry. So I this vanilla raspberry scent, this is from the uh, store Nourish in Savannah, Georgia. It is a like, kind of like a luxury skin, candle, soap uh, store. And I love this vanilla raspberry scent. It is super clean and yummy. It's, it's so good. And apparently they made a limited amount. I didn't know. They made a very limited amount of these candles. I have never seen them on their website since. I should have gobbled up a bunch. I didn't know it was a limited thing. Love it. Personally love oh, and that's the bishops. lace collection over here to the left. That's the lace collection, collection that I have for my late aunt who did heirloom sewing way back when. So cool. I think that they are just a timeless little outfit. You can dress them up, dress them down, do them in many different kinds of fabric. I love smocking them. They're just one of my favorite things to sew. And I hope you give them a try. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. This is just the way I've been slicing the cake recently, if you will. But of course, there are many other ways to do it. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. As always, we thank y'all for watching and we will catch y'all next time. Alright, and there's that outro. Oh my goodness, I forgot about that too. Like I said, we lived in the outskirts of Savannah, so we had a little bit of property, and that was uh, the back of our, the back of our property. All right, and that was kind of the hot mess that I was expecting. Definitely, like you grow and change and, and everything as you as you do stuff, you learn and grow, and that's all part of it. I think I need to get this one down for a nap. So thank you all for stopping by and hanging out with us. I think this was this was fun, even though I'm a little bit like, yep, that's on the internet. So I hope you had fun, and if you have any like things you want to see with these sort of Saturday Saturday story time type videos, more relaxed, I'm all ears for it. Um, I've got other Saturday story times over here, and yeah, we appreciate y'all for watching, and hope to catch y'all next time.